What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Dream Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, Star Wars, the acolyte, Brian. We have been high on this show and been itching for the acolyte to see more of the glimpse that we saw previously, Brian. Star Wars Kung Fu. We have some early acolyte hype, Brian. What have you heard? So Joanna Robinson on her appearance on The Watch, which you should listen because we re referenced that a couple of times at different shows, said she has trusted sources who have seen the first few episodes of The Acolyte, and it is awesome. If you've been watching this show, you know that we've been, I'm, again, I'm going to repeat myself, we have been high on this show and we have been itching to watch more. And now... Brian, it's going to get even crazier. What do you think, Brian, <clears throat> is the holdup for something that has already... Has this been shot and done? Done. What is the holdup? What is the problem with giving us this? I do not understand anything about the way this project is being prepped and promoted. Nothing. So... They did a sizzle reel at Comic-Con. I think it was Comic-Con, not D23. It was one of the two. Not a trailer, a sizzle reel. It was a 60-second scene clip from, I think it was the first episode is what we heard. It pretty hard to find on the internet. I found a very grainy version of it. I sent it to Pablo. It blew his mind the second he saw it. <laughs> And I, I had the same reaction because I was like, this is true martial arts in Star Wars where we know Force and Jedi. That effectively is a martial art in and of itself. But this was shot in a way that was like, oh, the pacing is different. The timing is different. The movements of the character. Carrie Ann Moss, of course, of Matrix fame is one of the characters in the scene that is shown. And there hasn't been a mention of this show literally since that day. Nothing. Like... They didn't put the reel online. There hasn't been a teaser. They don't reference it in sort of Disney's kind of what to look forward to for 2024. All of the attention has been on this new Ray movie, the Mando Grogu announcement. What is the Filoni verse doing? I, I, this show feels like it's just been buried, like put in a bin somewhere. As it, and like now we get this one tidbit that it's actually awesome from a pretty credible source who I don't think would say that unless she trusted who was telling her. Like, I don't get it, man. Like this also, look, what we know about the show, it's High Republic. I'm immediately interested. Yeah. We are in a completely different time period than anything we've explored in Star Wars. Ding, that's yeah. interesting. Yes. We're not dealing with classic Jedi versus Sith. This is a Sith perspective story. You have my attention. And then you get a glimpse of the action choreography. And you're like, what am I missing here? How is this not, you know, we talk about, you know, saving this universe, saving that. This show wouldn't do that. But how is this not a potential breath of fresh air and an injection you of know what it does? You know why, into Brian? the Star Wars universe? You know why? It undermines what she, what Kennedy's trying to do. Keep it safe. It'll it'll force her to go outside of what she oh she knows, and the people she knows, and the stuff that they do, and the things that she would have to do in order to keep up with something like that if it came out. But she greenlit it. <laughs> That's the thing. Like it's she greenlit it, but she's also green. She she's uh, this Ray thing is getting crazy right now. This this Ray thing is is just bringing. That's what I mean. They need good publicity. They need good PR. They need hype about something. And it's like the best thing they've done in recent years is Andor, and this feels like that. But that's the thing. Level. If they do this, they know they got to... They don't, that's a problem. If they see this and that, and that's what I'm pretty sure people are saying that this, the Acolyte is fantastic. It provides a different take on what, how we see Star Wars. Brian, this is, a, this is new. This is new. 
Star Wars Kung Fu come we're on. We're the ones bitches. We're gonna keep hammering this. Acolyte colon the- Star Wars Kung Fu. That's what we're gonna keep calling it. I got the thumbnail ready. But come on, are we really? You want buzz, you want excitement, you want that a feeling that's been missing towards Star Wars or that IP for some time now. You want it back, this is how you do it. And then this is where you move forward from. This is the foundation of how you, how the Jedi is supposed to be. Cause not everybody's supposed to be a Jedi. Not everybody's supposed to be having Jedi swords. Not everybody's supposed to be nice. No, and I think one of the things that's interesting is if you fo- if you follow this is a piece of George Lucas Star Wars canon, but he he has said, and you can find it, he always thought of the Star Wars universe as kind of evolving or almost devolving, meaning that he always thought of the technology and the force knowledge and the skills as being greatest in the early years and days of the universe, and then it would those things would gradually be lost over time which is why he says the fight choreography and the skill level of like a Ray Park and, and Ewan McGregor and Phantom Menace is so much higher I see. than Mark Hamill and gotcha. David Prowse in Empire Strikes Back. He says that's not an accident. That's the way he always thought the force would kind of, the, for, the knowledge of the force would sort of peter out and dwindle throughout the universe. Well, the High Republic is as far back <laughs> as we've gone. So the idea that you would see mind-blowing fighting and force using actually is consistent with Lucas's vision of what Star Wars was supposed to be. I give it to me, like inject but it into my again, bloodstream now. Ryan, what are you? You just described something that we've haven't. You've just described something that. If we go to the High Republic and 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 we're supposed to be seeing these amazing things and that is lost a little bit at a time throughout generations throughout the years what is it supposed to look like now and is it something that we actually want to look I mean Brian so it it is a question of how do you go from this to wanting us to like this the Ray movie yeah the Ray movie is at the other end of that spectrum that's exactly the point. I, I, that's why I think if you actually cornered George Lucas, I think he would agree with us. He would be excited for the acolyte, and he would have questions as to what we're doing with with a, with a Ray movie, with a Ray Jedi Order movie. But I just don't understand. Like, what is the downside of putting some material out, getting some you know, getting some critics like. Joanna, in, to see a little bit of this, to kind of go out into the social media and on, and, and to sort of start to build some hype that this is a new and different. What is the downside? The downside is the expectation of further I, content being as good and looking as good as that. That's what I keep going back to. Different, it's a different flavor of like when we saw Andor and all the locations and the sets and some of the action set pieces and it reminded us of like what the glory of Star Wars could be and then you see all the volume work in some of the Filoni shows that looks cheaper by comparison because it is. And one last thing. What is he saying? She, Daisy Ridley. I don't know what is the push towards wanting to do this, Brian. Is this a, again, I mentioned this before, bucket list thing? Or... She wants to be the Furosa of, of Star Wars. What is it that she wants? <laughs> so she went on the Happy, Sad, Confused podcast talking about the first trilogy and said, quote, I think it's still upsetting because you don't want people to feel like you've not served the thing they're a fan of. And Ryan, meaning Ryan Johnson, Ryan Johnson's was so divisive. Felt like the first one, everyone was responsive in a similar, a similar way. And then Ryan's was super divisive. And the last one was super divisive. Like, true. And then she says later on, before I had breakfast with Kathy, meaning Kathy Kennedy last year, I had five people come up to me and go, are they going to do any more with you? It was really strange. It felt like uh, it, it, six months before that, the, pe- the way in which I'd been greeted by people was quite different to the way it had been. So she's kind of intimating that as time has passed, people have kind of are not as sour about what's happened. And I'm like, well, 
yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, it's five years later. I mean, it is a movie, man. Like people, people do, people do kind of move on with their lives a little bit, but don't get it twisted. Like people did not like those, like, you know, and for her to be like, it's upset. Like, okay, I get it, you know, but that's yes, what happens. Yes, like, yes, in, like you, deal you with didn't it. write the movie, you didn't direct the movie, you acted the part. It's okay. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, yo. I don't get why you, you, you keep having to bring this up. You know, and like, I don't know that it's necessarily a a launch a, a launch pad for this new project that you're doing. Like, because I, I have a new, I have news for you based upon based upon the early buzz, and we've talked about this on our recent shows on the early buzz around this project. Divisive's what you're gonna get. Yeah. That's probably where you're headed with this. So if that upsets you the first time. I don't know if this movie even gets made. I don't know if it's gonna get I'm made. Still, yeah. I and I said this at the time. I was like, uh, we've seen the Kathy Kennedy announce these projects and say they're gonna get there, and then they don't get there. Remember Rogue Squadron? Where's Rogue Squadron at these? <laughs> right? It's like we've been here before. All the Benny Off and Weiss trilogy, Ryan Johnson's trilogy. We we've been here before, folks. Yeah, yeah. Lando yeah. movie. Like, I mean, it's a long. Is that lit. still happening? Lando's supposed to be still happening. They all right? claim they're all still happening. Yeah, I mean. Donald Glover, you can see him as Mr. Smith right now yeah, on Prime. Yeah. Have you seen that show? I haven't watched it yet. Okay, me neither. Did you watch it? I haven't watched no, it. No, no, I haven't watched it yet. I think this project has a, a large uphill battle to win the confidence of the broader cinematic audience and of the rabid Star Wars fan base, for better or for worse. That's how I feel about this. Yeah. Baggage. Yeah, baggage, Pablo. This project has baggage already. But how do you think people would take that that story or move on from it? How? The trilogy, you mean? If they yeah. swore it off? Yeah. <laughs> well, they swore it off, but like, not even like, just move on from it. Like, well, not even ask questions about it. Well, there's that camp of fans that petitioned her to remake the last. Remember, they were gonna like raise money to like have Kathy Kennedy remake the last. You, it's out there. They wanted the remade trilogy with like George Lucas's ideas as the as the storyboard for that. Mm. That's out there, and, and you know, can they do it? Of course they can do it. Look what they did to the um, look what they did to the literary universe. Remember, they basically took all that and said it wasn't canon. Yeah, 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 yeah and like yeah, yeah. so they. And if you can you can toggle that on and off as you need to, right? And th there's a lot of, I mean, Star Wars books is like a library unto itself. Yeah. Like if you, if you wanted to say, oh, just kidding, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, quite honestly, look, we just saw it. Marvel just did it with the Netflix shows, right? They weren't going to be yeah, canon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they ran into all sorts of problems and they said, hmm, maybe we need <laughs> Daredevil 1, 2, and 3 to lead on a little bit. Oh, it's canon. Flip yeah, the switch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I have to, why not? Why can't they why can't they change labels and you know you know move move things around? But I just yeah. think to me, I don't mean to put Daisy Ridley in the Snyderverse camp because I don't think it's quite the same and she doesn't deserve that. But there is a little DNA there of to her point of divisiveness. There's a little bit of a taint coming mm -hmm. off the end of that trilogy. So I think you have an, an inherent risk when you start to bring forward storyline strands and characters from that trilogy. You're, you're asking people to remember that. And this is my argument for why, like, you know, if they kept Henry Cavill as Superman, even if he could be great, and I think he could be better than he showed, it will keep people and freshen people's mind the divisiveness of the stuff that came before. So that's why I just think this program has an uphill battle, or this, mm -hmm. this, this movie has an uphill battle. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of uh, the Acolyte. Do yourselves a favor if you can find any footage of this, which is very difficult, I think. Right? Yeah. Uh, any footage of the Acolyte, the, 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 the sizzle reel that they had for the Acolyte, um, you, it'll blow your mind. And when it, whenever they decide to release this, if they decide to release this, Brian, they have to tear up anything that they're doing moving forward. Tear those scripts up and just start from that premise. That sort of getting back to that. Why does it have to? Why does the skills, the knowledge, philosophy have to degrade over time? Why can't we dig deeper and try to get back to that? Possibilities. Um, and yeah, let us know 
what you guys think of Daisy Ridley and and her uh, her wanting to want to do this. Uh, uh, it's not gonna end well. All I can say is it's just it's just not. Um, it's better for her. I, I think she is a, 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 a talented actress, and I think she can do much more. Um, she would have been even. I would have even put her up for Lois Lane. But yeah, I could have seen that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all this, and we'll see you next time on the Nigerian Report. The show goes on. Yeah.